Hello viewers, you are watching QTV, the Gambia Sports Private TV Station, and we are broadcasting from our studios here on Kairaba Avenue. My name is Alu Sise, and it is your weekly State of Affairs program. I'm here with my <coughs> co-host, Mr. Sidi Sidi. Good to have you once again. Thank you very much, Alu, and good to be here. Well, our guest this week is uh, Honorable Sidi S.K. Njai, who is the deputy uh, spokesperson of the National People's Party. He is also the deputy speaker of the National Assembly and, of course, the chair of the Defense and Security Committee uh, of the National Assembly. Uh, last month, December, the National People's Party held its first uh, Congress, I mean, since its inception in 2019. I mean, and CD is joining us this week to discuss about the Congress and, of course, the upcoming local government election following what many will say is the underperformance of the National People's Party where they got only, they won only 18 seats uh, uh, in the last parliamentary election. Uh, CD, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the, on the program once again. Thank you. Pleasure having me here. Uh, um, hello, viewers. Yes, uh, like I said, I mean, you, you, you had your first uh, Congress uh, last month where we saw the President, Adam Abaro, uh, elected as the Secretary General and uh, Party Leader, Dembo Bojang as the National President, Dr. Demba Sabali, first Deputy National President, Suku Singate, second Deputy National President, of course, Lamin Cham as the National Campaign Manager, Musa Drame, National Treasurer, Lamin Kunjami, Spokesperson, you were elected, you know, maintained again as the Deputy Spokesperson, Ajame Mwina Bande, National Women Mobilizer, and then we also saw some, someone like Haji Bani Kosichoko as the Secretary of Fundraising and you know, Resource Mobilization among other executive uh, members. Let's reflect uh, back to the uh, Congress. I mean, what were the key takeaways as far as the Congress is concerned? Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, the key takeaway as far as the Congress is concerned was one, the party, um, in accordance to the electoral law uh, and as established, uh, met the requirement of uh, organizing an elective Congress, of course, and we had a resolution to, uh, which indicates that elected executive and or elective Congress will be held every four years. Uh, therefore, uh, and it was unanimously adopted and as well as amendment to our constitutions. Uh, and then the National Congress was held in the spirit of which the party leader and Secretary General, His Excellency President Adam Abaro, uh, called for tolerant, orderly, peaceful manner and respect for uh, fundamental laws of the land. And it was done in the spirit, of course, everybody knows, in a spirit of unison, in a spirit of love, in a spirit of decorum, and uh, that was the beauty. And we had the best Congress ever held in this country uh, that uh, everybody can attest, whether you agree or disagree, but everyone would attest to the fact that it was the best in terms of organizations and in terms of the composer of the people and the, also the elections went peacefully Orders were elected, orders were not opposed, and orderly without a single hitches. Without a single hitches. So that was uh, huge. And for the first time, uh, the party flowing its formation and interim executive, they are confirmed by an elective Congress. And the party leader, His Excellency President Adam Barrow, was elected unopposed. I mean, you, you talk about. Uh some part of the constitution was amended. What was that part which was amended? Yeah, yeah, yeah. what was uh, amended was to uh, uh, do an elective congress uh, uh, every four years and, and also in accordance to the electoral laws in the sense that if you know now as we speak, the electoral law indicates every two years you must organize a congress. For the resolution to do the elective congress, you can organize a congress as per the electoral law every two years, but there you only looked at your audited account and other formalities. And if you want to amend your constitutions and you want to bring in any other resolutions or motion, either by the executive or the general membership, but ele election will be held only after every uh, four years. So that was key. And also, we also presented our, our finance, uh, the Treasury Department with the finance unit 
presented uh, the statement of accounts of uh, the party, you know, uh, 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 which was endorsed by the General Congress. I mean, how were these delegates identified <coughs> who came for this Congress? How were you how know? Were we they we had Congress from the village level to the ward, constituency, and regional. So these, uh, because when we were having our village mm. congresses, we had the entire village, or Kabilos, or uh, 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 in case of uh, big villages, it is divided into <coughs> uh, sections. So they form part of the, uh, the delegates to the village level. And villages also were delegates to the ward level. So those who were elected at the ward were delegated to the constituency, constituency to the region. Then in addition to the regional delegate or the National Congress, we also have all the, uh, uh, because each constituency, we have all the chairmen and certain positions as members of the regional executive. So in essence, uh, the delegates were drawn from the grassroots, from the village level to the national level in such system. Sidi, you also come uh, Thank you very much, Ali, and thank you. Uh, Deputy Speaker, uh, my brother Sidi Njai. Um, earlier you talk about certain amendments that are <coughs> taking place in the Constitution. What was the rationale behind those amendments? For example, having elected um, executive every four years instead of two years. Yeah, the rationale behind yeah, that? Yeah, the rationale behind it is to uh, align ourselves a bit into uh, normal, practical, democratic tenets. So that, you know, and also to encourage decorum and sanity within the party. Because if you want to go for elective every two years, that is why even in national elections, uh, either four years or five years, in some countries, some jurisdictions, uh, seven years or eight years. Because to allow, in addition to healing, <coughs> but also elected officers, enough time to perform to effectively uh, perform their duties as required. And it will also allow people also to be able to gauge whether those who are charged with the responsibility of those various positions uh, are equal to the task or not. Because within a year, then the next year you're talking about elec elections again. So it will be difficult for one to find time to, uh, uh, to take stock of those who are elected as part their performance and time uh, as opposed to four years or five years. Now, that is a key departure from, uh, 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 in fact, uh, this is our first Congress. It's a key departure from, from 2015, 2016, today, the way some parties were operating. We decided to give it a time of four years. And that will nobody will have an excuse to say is short. Uh, I could not achieve all that was assigned to me by the Congress delegates. And this is, you know, something that was unanimously agreed. Yeah, it was unanimous. Uh, it was unanimous. By, by it was unanimous. But, but fact, it, when, it, I, when it, I read the resolution, uh, it was unanimous. So, what other resolutions, you know, has been done? Um, there also we also amended our existing constitution the one that we deposited when we were uh, registering the party to the IEC, to include that, to include also various structures. We added some of the uh, structures, you know, we have media, communications, broadcasting, we have uh, uh, foreign uh, or diaspora, we also have uh, 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 the women wing, the youth wing, and uh, also the main national executive and also we have also included uh, corporate members to the national regional and constituency uh, to cater for all the people and all <coughs> interest group and all uh, uh, the minorities where necessary so in a scale between one to ten how would you uh, gauge the success of your last congress um you know it some people, they might say, it defies logic to give one 10 over 10. Uh, but because uh, if you look at the organizations, uh, you were there, um, uh, uh, it's, it's just the test of time. So it was 10 over 10. Why did it take uh, the NPP that long to <coughs> hold their Congress? You 
since 2019 to 2022? What happened? You know, 2020, you know, there was this uh, COVID the pandemic. Um, we wanted to uh, hold a Congress, but because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, gathering, we are, in forbidden. We, are, we are forbidden by national policies and, of course, international policies as well. So by the time restrictions were eased, we were already into the election cycle. So it was practically impossible to organize Congress. In fact, the IEC had uh, written to all political parties that we are due in November, December 2021 to say from now against 2022, December uh, 31st, uh, because they understand that we are on an electoral cycle. So those are the two reasons. One, <coughs> it was the COVID pandemic, and once restriction was eased, then come the election cycle. You, you went for the big, big, what I would say, the big event, and you definitely do it where you think you're supposed to do it, which is the OIC Conference Center. I would say that's quite an expensive house to hold your Congress. We are uh, the party in uh, government. We are the ruling party, and uh, we should set example, and uh, we, have, we enjoy uh, maximum support from every nook and cranny of this country. And uh, so we should be seen to be very organized. We should be seen to be very serious. We should be seen to be equal to the task. Those were the challenges that assigned to us by the Secretary General and party leader. And we have to live by that. What, what, what is the party's source of uh, funding? I mean, unlike other <coughs> parties, we, we hardly hear NPP organizing a fundraising event like yes, the, 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 your, your, the, the major opposition, the UDP. Yeah, we, we, we do, we have what we call membership contributions. We have, of course, fundraising, uh, maybe not uh, quite often publicized. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, you know, uh, uh, as a party, all of us uh, contribute uh, to the party monthly. And uh, maybe that's what is missing uh, from the, the Gambian people, but they may come to know. Uh, 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 and also, of course, uh, party leader, and also the general membership. We have uh, general membership throughout the country who put in their contributions and or donations. And as well as whenever we have event, in addition to all of us, including the party leader, but uh, the party also contribute, uh, all of us individually. So and monthly, uh, uh, some of us monthly, uh, we contribute to the so, party so directly. Wh wh what is the mode of collection? How do you, how do, how do you go about collecting these contributions? Um, we, most of us, uh, it is directly from source. Okay. What do you mean directly from source? What do you mean? Yeah, from Treasury. Okay. Yes. I con yeah. Like I contribute monthly and I wrote to my uh, Bank? accountant office, account officer and this I said, so uh, you mean you set up a direct debit? Yes. What about what else in, in, in perhaps in, in rural Gambia? Who <coughs> those who do, do are contributing, they bring, they can come either in cash or pay to a bank account. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Njai. Um, quick, let's just shift to your role as the deputy speaker. Uh, to preserve trust in the House, the speaker's action or the deputy speaker's action must be seen to be impartial. How do you balance this impact, you know, being a deputy speaker at the same time being um, part of a political party and holding an executive position in a political party? You know, uh, the National Assembly itself, if not, is the biggest political office in every country, irrespective of the seat of the presidency. That's mm -hmm. the president as an office, is as a person. Then the uh, institution that is uh, uh, number one uh, political institution in every country is the National Assembly. All members of the National Assembly, from the Speaker to the last member of the National Assembly, we are all politicians. And as established by constitution and law in every jurisdiction, including the Gambia, which, uh, of course, the, that is why the 1997 Constitution when it was defining civil service or public service, who may not, who should not participate in politics or hold public offices, excluded the president, the vice president, the speaker or deputy speaker, ministers and members of the National Assembly. So once you are seated at the chair, you are presiding, you have to be a political 
and uh, you have to do your, uh, your, your work without fear of favor, affection, or ill will in accordance to the procedures, that is the standing orders of the National Assembly, the rule of procedures that are guided, even if you, even every member, any member who is out of order, any other member or the honorable speaker will uh, draw that honorable member is out of order and bring the member to an order. So if the honorable speaker, you are, uh, uh, once you are seated in the chair, then you have to be impartial. Y you have to rule by the book. You cannot be otherwise. You cannot see the deputy spokesperson or the party leader or a, a, a chairman of a party or such general. No, but as a speaker presiding, you have to be fair. You cannot uh, partake in debate. In fact, that's why when I am uh, on the chair, I cannot debate. I cannot. Uh, give my personal okay. opinion on issues. It's only when I am seated on the floor. If the honourable speaker is on the chair of the chair of the speaker of the speakership, he want to participate in the debate. He have to leave the seat, and then I come in, and he'll go to the floor and contribute. Uh, why? Because the law is in itself is saying they are politicians. They can partake in politics. They can partake in debate, but not when you are. It is only within the confines of the chair, when I'm sitting on the chair, that I cannot, uh, even if there is a bill before where I'm seated, I cannot, when somebody speak between the intervals, I cannot express my opinion on to, uh, the subject matter. But uh, the Constitution clearly uh, stated that I, as a speaker or deputy speaker, or a president, or a vice president, or a cabinet minister, member of parliament, you are not uh, a civil or public servant. So therefore, you are not denied to partake in politics or hold public office, or political office by the constitution. Thank you. But, but, but uh, how, how do you manage this too? I mean, you, you certainly, you're a politician, you belong to one side of the house, and you are also on the chair. Certainly, there, there will be a conflict of interest if there's an issue arises that you know, directly affects the government which you belong as a ruling party? No. If, if I am presiding, I can only uh, play by the rules and encourage <coughs> members to maintain the quorum and to do their contribution in accordance to the standing orders of the National Assembly. I'm not sure if you regularly visit Parliament. You see, when, I, when I'm presiding, uh, or if the speaker is presiding, uh, you know, we, uh, you don't see uh, political leaning. But if I want to partake, uh, you know, I do contribute, I do debate yeah. and take side uh, when I'm on the floor of the uh, House. But uh, when I preside over you, sometimes members of the NPP or uh, partners, they may come up with something and then a member of the UDP or so will object to raise a point of order. Uh, and and if the member is right, I have always been doing the ruling in their favor. Yeah, yeah or ruling in the favor uh, of the people. Uh, we have uh, seen uh, that. Uh, exactly. So that's 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 when we are there is not about uh, party or political or or association. It's about the country. It's about the national assembly, and that is why uh, most of the time you can ask when we are there. When I'm on the floor, when I'm on the chair and the presiding. Uh, it's, it's yeah, you can ask those who are there. Yeah, well, I, 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 I know certainly, I, I know how it operates. I've been covering parliament since 2010. I mean, you, you served two terms uh, under the former government as nominated National Assembly member. But if you had to compare the two, I mean, the legislature then and now, what's your take? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, it different, uh, maybe the angle that you're coming from. There's more liberty. Uh, members of the National Assembly are more democratic, are more free today than ever because, you know, remember Section 91D of the 1997 Constitution uh, was the one the then government was using to control members of parliament. <laughs> so, because not only government, the ruling party APRC at the time, but even uh, the opposition. Because if you, if you misbehave and they, they, they sack you from your party, you lose your seat as a member of parliament. So therefore, you owe allegiance to your party or your party leader than the nation. And in this instance, President Adam Barrow said, no, owe allegiance to the nation and the Gambian people when you are in the, at the National Assembly. So that fear is no longer there. You are there guided by your concern and your principle that you choose to belong to an organization or an association that's a political party. 
based on the party's program manifesto and principle. Once you are in the flow, you must toward that line because the your party's uh, policies and programs, that's what they presented to the Gambian people and said that is, and it was transformed into a national interest. You sold it to the Gambian people and they bought it in excess in the case of the National People's Party. So if I'm a member of the National People's Party, I'm a member of the National Assembly, you must toe the line of the national interest and the line of the National People's Party because that is the interest of the Gambian people. That's what President Adam Abaro and the NPP sold to Gambian and they bought in excess and presented uh, with an absolute majority uh, in, in 2021 December. Um, thank you very much. Uh, so Deputy if Speaker. you, as a member of parliament, you think you, whether Gambia or other jurisdictions, even in the West, you think you can no longer tow uh, the line of your party, you should resign. Thank you. Um, also, as the chair of the Standing Committee on Defense and Security, what is the most uh, urgent security issue presently that, uh, as a country, we are, we are faced with? Yeah, um, uh, uh, the ongoing process of security reform. Um, from 2017 to date, a lot of reformed, abstract or visible reforms. Because once you talked about development, it's both, both physical and abstract. Uh, um, now, the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, they no longer detain people. Yes, I, yes now. NIA, by law. The National Intelligence Agency, NIA, no longer detain people. Just to get this right, we go with the name SIS by, by the reason because that amendment was not actually done in the National Assembly. It's not been changed. Yeah, that's why it's National so, Intelligence Agency. It's so, NIA by I mean, law. Yeah, yeah. So, so as we speak right now, do you think it is right for us to superficially call this SIS, SIS when NIA. you have just proven to us it is still NIA. the NIA in our law books? Yeah, in our law books, and as a member of the National Assembly, and in fact as an institution, whenever we write to them, it's the National Intelligence Agency, because as far as we are concerned, legally it's NIA that so, we have. So well, the National how long do we have to wait for so this? The, I, 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 I'm not so I cannot hold brief for them, but I think uh, they're in the process of uh, 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 writing the wrong. So uh, the National Intelligence Agency, NIA, they're no longer um, detained or arrest or, you know, the Gambia police force uh, no longer detain people also beyond 72 hours. No Gambian is, you know, uh, uh, put in mile two without uh, court uh, or order. So uh, those are 100% uh, 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 reformed that maybe some people might not realize. Also, we, in terms of logistics, in terms of uh, continuous uh, training over the last seven, eight years, the Gambia Armed Forces and all other security sector, they continue to uh, train their personnel to be uh, a, to exercise their constitutional mandate, uh, as in the case of the Gambia Armed Forces, uh, defend uh, the sovereignty and territorial integrity of the of the of the country against both external and internal aggression. You know, in the case of the Gambia Police Force, the maintenance of law and order and protection of life and property internal. You know, so uh, uh, these things we have to continue to build on them and in the sides of the National Intelligence Agency to more training, more professional to in intelligence, uh, gathering, production, analysis and disseminations. You know, and then, of course, as a sovereign country, we have to continue also to spend uh, uh, on our, in our infrastructure, our social services, uh, in education, health, you know, energy, all these uh, interlink to national security. And of course, uh, and, and as well as also uh, to get the required uh, uh, materials that the Gambian forces or the Gambia police force or the uh, immigration department or the Gambia prison services or the fire rescue service would need. You know, uh, we would continue to, to, to pursue that. And as uh, defense and security, we had just concluded a nationwide tour. And because of that, 
it uh, paid dividend in our last budget. We, we, uh, we want to thank the entire membership of the National Assembly as well for buying into our presentations during the uh, budget, not only the bilateral, but also during the conclusion of the national budget and allotting us uh, the, some of the money, not all that we require, to add to the interior and defense. And then they, they, they were too generous. To when you add. talk about the reforms, we have seen a um, lot has been done, like you rightly said, with a lot of capacity buildings here and there. But again, the welfare of those young men and women in uniform. Take an example of the police force today, where you know, a young police officer in the street has to walk into a shop to buy his or her own uniform. When you talk about their welfare, some of them get into an yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 let me just conclude. Will get into an accident by executing their job, by doing their job. And you know, if they happen to be a victim of an accident, you know, they have to look for, go phone and looking for friends and families to support to give them that uh, well-needed treatment they have. Yeah, and yeah. We, you know, we talk about reform. Let's talk about independence of uh, as well, as far yeah, as our, yeah, our, our police institution is concerned. Okay. You know, we have a police force that, I that actually investigate itself. In modern policing, in democratic policing, we need to have an institution, the Gambia Police Force, with an independent police complaint commission. Here and there you hear cases that have been taken to the police, but the police sits to investigate themselves. So I think the moving forward, as we are working all the security reforms, we should be looking into those angles. Be, be, uh, because I'm not writing, I wanted one after the other. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, let, 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 let me say the, the, yes. the Gambia Police Force, yes. they have an in the, uh, a complaint uh, yes. unit. They have it. Where if uh, you are uh, been wrong or you are allegedly been wrong by a member of the Gambia Police Force, of course, you complain. When you it's complain, the, oh, they, uh, it, 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 you know, sometimes it's not all that you think is right, my right. But more often than not, they have, and the current leadership of the Gambia Police Force, under the leadership, of course, of uh, the president himself, uh, ensured that the Gambia Armed Forces, the Gambia Police Force, subscribes to the constitutional mandate. And also, to know that they are subordinate, not only to civil authority, but also to the Gambian people. And this thing is an ongoing process. But when you look at it 2017, 2016, 2023 today, one would agree that a lot of improvement. Absolutely. We don't have, uh, still there's still room for improvement. But a lot of improvement has been done. In the area of welfare, as you indicated, we, it's a good omen that we have a very good strength of the, both the army and the police. And we must also recognize the fact that Gambia is a tax-based economy. We, what we, all that thing we want, we cannot have it within a twinkle of an eye. It has to take some processes. For example, this budget, government did whatever it could to cater a little they have for the welfare of the police, the army, the immigration, and all us. And us as defense and security, we also additionally, the cuts and the saving that we made the entire National Assembly, this is not only defense and security, the entire membership of the National Assembly, they look at some of those lines as per the welfare of the Gambia Police Force and the Army, which I don't want to dwell on, top, and they gave us some good amount, the millions, and we uh, added to whatever they have to for the improvement of the conditions and welfare of the Army and the police and the Gambia Prison Services, the Fire Rescue Services. And I can assure you that in the next couple of months, once they started some of those things, uh, uh, on behalf of the National Assembly, as defense and security, we'll go there also, we'll invite all the media, then they will see some of the uh, improvement that uh, the government is doing and as well as the National Assembly. Th thank you very much, uh, Honorable City SK Njai, Deputy Spokesperson of the National People's Party, who also doubles as the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and Chair of the National Assembly's uh, Committee on Defense and Security. We'll go for a short break and when we return, discussion continues do stay tuned espace motors is the largest and most modern auto service in the gambia espace motors is the only authorized dealer in chevy mercedes-benz trucks mercedes-benz buses kia ford futon mini 
and MIDI buses, futon trucks. At Espas Motors, we have qualified professionals who use modern technology to diagnose and repair all brands of motor vehicles. Espas Motors services include auto sales, auto repairs, vehicle painting, availability of high quality spare parts, towing services. We are reachable at any time. Call Espas Motors on 35 222 353-4444 or locate us on the Bertel Harding Highway. Espas Motors. Welcome back viewers from Dasod Break. You're watching QTV, the Gambia's first private TV station and we're broadcasting from our studios here on Kairama <coughs> Avenue. Here in the Gambia, I'm your host, Aleo Sise, with my co-host, Mr. C.D. C.D. Sise. And our guest this week is Honorable C.D. S.K. Njai, uh, Deputy Spokesperson of the the, uh, the National People's Party, the ruling party in, the, in this case. And of course, he's a Deputy Speaker and also uh, um, chair of the National Assembly uh, Committee on Defense and, and Security. Honorable, you are just trying to emphasize the efforts uh, being done by the government to improve the, the welfare of all these fine men and women in, in uniform. But how much is this reflected in their well-being? You talk to so many people in the security service, they are not really happy, they are not really satisfied with the way things are going. Their welfare is not really taken care of. Yeah, you know, I... I would want to continue to repeat this. The members of the Gambia Armed Forces, and of course the police, and all the security, we agree gov no government can solve the welfare of our security forces once and for all. Some issues will be evolving, and the orders are continuous. And, uh, but uh, I agree, and we sympathize with our young men and women in uniform who will continue to toil and moil. When it's raining, they are under the rain. The scorching sun, they are under the sun. But something is being done. You know, remember, for example, the Gambia government cannot give the police one billion dollars. They cannot give the army one billion dollars. We don't even have a billion dollars. We don't have. We are operating in a very tight and difficult national budget. And when you look at the allocations of the national budget, uh, you know government is doing well. But the leadership of the army and the police, they are in the process of if they are thinking outside the box. Because in other jurisdictions, for example, you have the members of the army and the police constructing roads, constructing or taking projects, buildings, competing like any other uh, companies. So once they have those things, it will also help ameliorate some of the challenges they have as per the little that governments will give them. And it is, and also, you, 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 know, you know, government spends millions on food and food services for the army, the police, the prison and others. In other jurisdictions also, they have agricultural battalions which also, in addition to aiding civil on the request of civil authority, also engages in agricultural productions for our consumption as well as also for commercial. Um, we must think along those lines also to supplement the meager resources that government... Uh, Is it not by time? Because it seems these are ideas that have been, you know, rolling and rolling. If you look at the police, for example, there's so much that they can do by innovation. You know, there are a lot of things that are happening that will bring revenue. You know, you go from Westfield to Tipagaras, Westfield to Pipeline, Westfield to uh, Talendin, Larikunda. Cars are randomly parked all over the places. These are revenues that they can tap in and yes. bring in yes. in I terms of reforms. Yes, mm -hmm. I think, I think uh, yeah, all those things are part of uh, means and ways that they can get revenue, not only for the police, but for the state. For the state. Uh, for example, if they have a bigger place, between the KM, around the Brikamas and other areas where people who wrongly park or people who committed certain offenses or so, and they'll they just, just come have and, to be and, and, and go. So I think, you know, you know, we must depart from Neil and Kodan Defe to a new innovation. Absolutely. The biggest challenge we have as a continent is change, uh, innovation. We, if we must revolutionize our thinking and uh, the way we approach things and do things. Because government, to be honest with you, 
with the hundred percent commitment from the president, uh, committing uh, finances, action, but because we don't have. So therefore, it is only through those revolutions that the army and the police will engage in meaningful ventures that will create huge revenue for them and for government. And I think they are thinking along those lines. And I am so in a so near future, uh, they, because you have the engineering corps in the army, the police, and you know, of course, they have some, they're thinking of it, you know, agricultural battalion, because remember president visited even Basse, mm -hmm. you know, they are, they are the Basse battalion. They have a unit that is engaged in agriculture. And in fact, recently the president presented them tractor. So when we went there, he promised them a tractor. He was so happy. And then uh, recently he fulfilled those promises. So they could do a lot. And you can see then government, in fact, all the revenues, they could also use it. Because the leadership of the country, that's the president, and the leadership of the army, and the, uh, uh, the let me say the National Security Council, they are also very concerned, and then they sympathize with the, with the uh, members of the security services when it comes to food and food services, and also their uniforms. I can assure you the defense and, and, and security. And tra transportation, I'm sure I, I every morning as you drive to your office, you see tons of uh, yes. you know, I can security you, men and I can, women. I can assure you the difference in security. We've discussed this with them, with the, uh, the various security institutions there, the high command. And then uh, also, we are also constrained because of the resources. But uh, when you look at transport also, uh, if you observe a small, a big improvement have been done by the UPC, few buses from the police and the army but uh, i agree that uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, a big scheme to be created for transport uh, and as well as uh, uh, as indicated uh, uniforms and uh, because if you spend a yes. couple of hours just to get home or to get to the office you but, you you, you but, fatigue. But also you, you, that you is not. Energy. But also that is not only the uh, members of the security, every Gambian, uh, all civil servants, public officials, and as well as even those going to work or private or parastatals. Also, we and uh, and and government. Uh, President Barrow's government has uh, procured some uh, buses for urban transportations. And very soon, I'm um, so uh, the bosses, if they are not here, they will. Uh, is, is that different from the Q, Q group partnership with GPTC? Um, is that, or are you talking about a new, a new phase of bosses coming? Yeah, a new phase of bosses are coming. Uh, uh, and and uh, it's called uh, the urban transportation. So because the president is very worried and concerned about the welfare of uh, public and civil servants. When, when I mean public and civil servant included includes the members of the security, yeah. to, and also the, 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 the those commuters going to the market, going to the garden, going to Gunju. So, uh, in, in 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 a month, two months, few months time, uh, there will be a lot of improvement. Uh, just on, on finally, Ali, just before you come in here, uh, you you have like Ali have rightly said you've been in the National Assembly, uh, the past uh, Republic, and we have seen the rate of accidents in this country. And I'm sure it touches you and it touches me and Ali and everybody else. Um, but we have seen very little done by the National Assembly to look at it seriously, to look at it seriously. If Gambia can be rated fourth in the world ranking of accidents, there is something fundamentally wrong. One of those is how we issue our license. And two is the, 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 the vehicles that are on our roads. Is it not by time we look at this from the National Assembly, come up with whether it's going to be a private you know, member bill or it's going to be a bill that you guys are going to ask the Minister of uh, Justice and the police to do something so that we can save lives? Because every day we are losing lives. And it's quite painful as a country, a very little country. You know, the laws are there. What is needed is attitudinal change and people take their responsibilities seriously. You and I, not only the police officer, but you, the one driving, the owner of the vehicles, the passengers, it's a collective responsibility. 
because once the vehicle is tested, everything is in order, you met all the requirements to acquire a driving license, and you go on the street. You drive 140, 150 kilometers. But some of those vehicles are not even roadworthy. Uh, no, I'm telling you, even if the vehicle is roadworthy, I agree there are a lot of vehicles that are not roadworthy, they need to be looked into, that need to be looked into. But we need attitudinal change. I agree. Speed over speeding. Drunk. You are drunk, you are driving. You are intoxicated. Or, you know, some erasing areas of which you should overtake and where you should in. This is state or the police have a little to do when it comes to those things. But also the area of government and the police that to review the way and manner they issue driving license to people in terms of age, in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, uh, competency, and in terms of the, vehicle, the vehicles uh, uh, testing. Those need to be looked into. And in fact, uh, we will also visit the, uh, the road traffic mobile, mobile, mobile traffic uh, unit very soon, uh, my committee. They will be notified, uh, um, so we will also go there, and that is very concerned. And there was a day, the National Assembly brought it as a matter of the day, mm -hmm. and talks about the issue of road accidents. It was brought, I think, the member for Nyanija, something yeah. like that, yeah. if I can, if, uh, mm -hmm. I believe. So uh, we are concerned, as not only as members of the National Assembly, but as parents, as sons and daughters and grandchildren of this country, and the mobile traffic and the driving and the license uh, department of the Gambia Police Force. Uh, um, so they are taking this seriously. That is why they, during the festive, mm -hmm. this is the, you know, Tobaski, Christmas, you know, uh, Ramadan, they increase the presence of personnel only to minimize uh, road accidents. But sometimes people drive recklessly. And but the, 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 the law, the, the, the road traffic the, the act law, is outdated. Yeah, we will. Yeah, I think uh, it's good also to review those archaic and uh, laws that need to be uh, uh, changed to represent the true realities on the ground. Thank so, you. honorable, I know we we cannot end this topic of security and defence without touching on the issue of the Kasamas uh, region, of course, the Fony. I mean, what are the issues at stake? In, in, in Kasamas or Fony, as you say, that you think should be of most concern to you and your committee? Yes, you know, my committee, uh, they are very concerned of the safety uh, and, of course, the life and properties of all Gambians, irrespective of where you come from. And the Gambia is not regional. Uh, we are in charge and as a government responsible to all Gambians. What happened in the Kasamas region, that's a Kasamas, that's a different ball game. Yes. You know, more often than not, you hear people talk about Kasamas Liwarta. We don't have a control over Senegalese fighting Senegalese in but their own it, region. It, it, has a, it has a spillover effect of course, on the Gambia. Of so course, that, makes it that is why exactly. we pray that peace prevail and reign in customers. We will continue to urge, and as the Gambia police force, we've been engaging them, to urge our citizen to restrain and to keep away from the customers region and to remain in the country and also to cooperate. They are cooperating with the security forces because, uh, you know, you must uh, abide by their guidelines. And we must not also politicize the war in Kasamas. We must not pol politicize what is happening. The responsibility of government uh, is to protect. And then that's what government is doing. Those displaced, they were being cared and catered for by government. And we have our Quiddity Action Force and our Standby Force patrolling uh, that side of our own territory and government is increasing their presence within the area so that if the rebels are chased in Kasamas, they, 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 they don't get in or when they get in, they don't create any havoc. Because you remember, once there is a war in a particular region or country, once either the 
government forces or the rebels or militias in any case comes in, it's also we are duty bound by international law to treat them with dignity and respect and process them and also to uh, call for their presence. We have also seen we want to implore on people. There was, you know, those who died in, who were, uh, you know, there were three of yeah, people three. Yeah. who were killed inside Casamas. It was very unfortunate because uh, they, we understand they were killed uh, in around 2 a.m. and some were spreading the news that they went to fetch firewood. Look, that's defy logic and imagination that you go and fetch firewood 2 a.m. Has later, a committee has a committee and later on to realize that. Yeah, they were not there for fetch fire. So we want to uh, encourage all our brothers and sisters to avoid those volatile. Wh when last was your committee in Fony to engage these people on what is happening? No, there? we have not been to Fony to engage them. We engage. Remember, we are not. We are representative of the people to sensitize them, and, but also we have a unit. There's the National Council for Civic Education that do civic sensitization. For us, what we uh, can do as an oversight function is to talk to the security council, the security the service chiefs. We had discussions with them with regards to that, and then the Gambia Armed Forces uh, leadership uh, under the command of the chief of defense staff and also the commander in chief as the president is continuously engaging the government of Senegal and in fact the two leadership and as well as the army chief of the Gambia and that they have been constantly engaging to de-escalate tension and that's why tension has been de-escalated because once tension are de-escalated it will be the interest not only Senegal but both of us because it will allow our communities around that belt to go to school, to go to, to do their work, domestic work, to pray, to, you know. So it is a collective responsibility also to ensure that that area is flushed out. All the, the rebels are flushed out once and for all. In fact, it could have been better if the ECOWAS subregion could come together and act decisively to see to read that all these militias and rebels around these countries and we stop harboring or supporting rebels and militias in the interest of our people. If you are committed and serious that the rebels in Casamas will end, the militias in Guinea Bissau, in Mali, in Burkina Faso, in Guinea Conakry will end. Only if the leadership of the African continent will act and not only remain parking without biting. I mean, last month, I mean, at, the, at, the, at this Congress, uh, at this summit, rather, I mean, the ECOWAS leaders, I mean, extended the mandate of the ECOMIC for another one year, I mean, as a committee. I mean, how do you react to this? No, 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 you know, Gambia is not an island and is part of a committee of nations. And we are respected in our role as an important player in ECOWAS, African Union, and the United Nations. As it is in other jurisdictions that Gambian armed forces and the police participate in peace missions, and maintaining and restoring peace and order in other jurisdictions, it is also in order for the Gambia as a country as well to accept uh, other forces in the spirit of the maintenance of peace, law, and order uh, within our jurisdictions. And it is incumbent on all of us to cooperate. When you go to the ordinary people in Fony or in the Nyomis, they will tell you the presence of economic in the southern bank and the northern part of the country. The ordinary people, I mean, not the 0.05% uh, uh, making on social media that they participate in their communities' activities, they give them free medical services, they help them and guide them, and because of their presence, they are assured that uh, hooligans or rebels or people who would be insurgents will not come into this country. But for, because for, for, the but problem for the, is... But for the people of Fony, this is not the case. I mean, every no, day they live in fear. About, uh, every day they live in fear uh, that uh, there uh, could be... Deputy um, speaking, no, I, can, I can attest to that. Just, just, just to add on to that. Uh, last Saturday, I was in Buyam, the inauguration of the new chief, uh, Ali Nyasi. Congratulations to the chief. 
Um, the former uh, National Assembly member, Amul Nyasi, who we all remember very well, was very it was critical of the economic forces over there. And he made this testimony that today they appreciate the economic info when it comes to free medical service. So you see. Anything that is actually happening for you today, these economic forces are there helping them. I'm just attest to yeah, what because you, you know said. the economic presence in the Gambia, economics are not here to antagonize Gambians. They are here to complement our security efforts. If I am not a security threat, I have no business with economic stations in Nyanija or stations in Fonyi. Because I have I, I I know I will not be in conflict with them because I have no ill motive. Because, you see, to determine once the, uh, a unit on behalf of ECOWAS or AU or UN is deployed to a country, they are also mandated to look at strategically because their deployment will be based on strategic operations. They have a reasons of uh, deploying there to help in the maintenance or in the restoration of peace and order. Okay, L let's now, uh, because we, we, we're running out of time, I mean, local government elections is coming, is coming up. I mean, National People's Party, how prepared are you? Yeah, we are well prepared. And uh, as we speak, we have closed applications for chairmanship and mayor, mayoral candidates across the country and as well as our ward councillors and selections are being done. And uh, we are going to approach it the same way we approach the presidential elections. How about national and assembly elections? The same way? Are you I said approach we approach it the same way you approach national assembly elections. You know, you know, when you go into an operation, you succeed. You go to another operations. You have challenges. You've learned both the operations and the tactical operations that you use to succeed, and the mistakes that you made along the way to to have some costs. So impact. So we have learned from both, and we are going to approach it with unison, with uh, vigor, with more determinations, and we are inshallah going to win all the chairmen. Any coalition? Any, any, any coalition? I mean, yes, we have our partners. We 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 still maintain all of them. PPP in uh, Yes, uh, yeah. PPP made some uh, interesting uh, pull out. If you remember, shortly before even our National Congress, the party leader of the PPP, the interim party leader, was on the media to say that with, without NPP, they are going to contest the mayor in KM, Banjul, and the chairmanship in West Coast. In essence, he had announced that they have pulled out for whatever reasons we may not understand. And we also saw what he said. Of course, President Adam Barrow is committed to the partnership. And what we said was those holding incumbents, what's incumbents in the country will, and for us, we will all work together and contest under one umbrella, a grand coalition of NPP, because we are being restricted by our laws that we have here. It's not like Senegal. For example, all of them contest under President Makisal's uh, coalition of Beno Bokayaka. Like here, if we had Beno Boka NPP or Beno Boka or Irwa, Fenko, whatever, we could have all contest on the but the 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 end results and the objective is now and also 2026 for to, to have a broader partnership all of us to contest under one umbrella that was what we that was the intention uh, and also as a president he continues to do his obligation as per the uh, partners as i said even the ppp as recent as their Congress, it was sponsored by a party leader, and uh, the uh, uh, gestures that uh, uh, the president and the dignity and honor he continued to accord to all coalition partner parties, including the PPP, their leadership, and as a party, will continue. Uh, well, I mean, I'm afraid we we run out of time. <laughs> see the, the, the time is up. But finally, finally, uh, <laughs> honorable. Yeah, yeah, no, finally, the time is up. Final, uh, the time is up. All right. fi finally, honorable. It's strategy. Yeah, yeah, it's strategy <laughs> to pull me out. <laughs> finally, honorable. I want I mean, to hear from yeah, you. No, no, the, the time is up. <laughs> finally, finally, honorable CD. I mean, as we speak, I mean, we are without a vice president following the death of our uh, former vice president, uh, Ali Badra Job. Someone will be asking, Sidney, you are very outspoken, smart, intelligent. I mean, would you like to be the next VP? In my wildest dream, I've never thought of that. And 
if President Adam Barrow was to hand me the position of VP now, I would say, Your Excellency, sir, Mr. President, I'm sorry, but I want to remain as a Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable CDSK. Yeah, you will be with us. Uh, with that, we bring an end to this week's uh, edition of the State of Affairs Program. I was your host, Alu Sise, with my co host, uh, Mr. CD 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 and our guest this week was uh, Honorable CD Eskenjai, uh, Deputy Spokesman of the uh, National People's Party, who is also the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly and Chair of the Parliament's uh, Committee on Defense and Security. Thank you so much for watching. Do join us next week. Until then, bye bye.